Good day, good evening, be movie maniacs wherever you may be. It's Paul Brooks coming at you. Welcome to the first in what we are hoping will be lots of a new little thing we're doing called B Movie Mania interviews. We're going to be chatting with people in B movies, people associated with B movies, all sorts of cool stuff. And I could not be more thrilled about my very first guest that I interviewed. Her name is Jackie Naaman Jones. She is bona fide B movie royalty. You, of course, know her uh, as Debbie from Manos, The Hands of Fate, one of the most infamous B movies of all time, largely considered to be the worst B movie of all time. And I have uh, a pretty difficult time arguing with that. Jackie and I chatted for about 20 minutes and she was just absolutely wonderful. Uh, you, you could not ask for a nicer person to chat with. She's my kind of people. So I really hope you enjoy my interview with Jackie Naaman Jones. It's B-Movie Mania. Mania. I am here chatting right now with Jackie Naaman Jones. Jackie, thank you so much for chatting with me here on B-Movie Mania. You're welcome, Paul. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Well, uh, first of all, I wanted to offer my condolences to you and your family for the recent passing of your father. Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, It was just a week before his, uh, his birthday, actually, and I was in Chicago at the Music Box Theater, and I had just seen him and, and had shared that I was going and shared uh, some of the, the latest rough cuts from Manos Returns, the film that, that we are completing now that he was in. And so it was kind of a blessing just the way he went and the time. And, you know, I'm just so grateful for, for everything I was able to share with him. Well, I'm really glad to hear that. And that was going to be my next question, whether or not he got to see any of the footage from the new film. He did. He did get to see some of it. Um, not since we've done more with the special effects and color and sound, but but he saw enough of it to really get a kick out of it. And then the whole Manos Returns filming and, and having him come to the cast and crew party that we had arranged for our Kickstarter backers was like him walking the red carpet. I'll just never forget the look on his face when he was walking up to the party and he looked up and saw all these people and their cameras and smiles. I'll just, that's imprinted in my brain for the rest of my life. And you know, one of the great parts of being in movies is that that's really part of your, uh, your legacy that's able to, to live on after you're gone, you know? Yes, yes. And uh, just since his death, what was it, the, the MST3K Turkey Awards, which was just, well, he died on the 11th and the Turkey Day Awards were on the 24th, one day after his birthday. And Manos, The Hands of Fate was uh, voted as the MST3K all-time fan favorite. Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe I actually voted for it as well. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> of course. Um, speaking of MST3K, you are out here in the Los Angeles area right now, um, and you attended the LA premiere of the brand new season of Mystery Science Theater on Netflix. I did on Tuesday night, uh, and then on Monday I also got to go to Disneyland with uh, some of the MST3K Revival League group, wow. some of the people that had spearheaded the the Kickstarter that made MST happen to begin with. So um, very highly involved people and what fun that was. There was 26 of them that showed up or 26 of us in the group. Uh, my director from Manos Returns, our new film came. She, she flew out from Seattle and spent those couple days with us. And um, Nudia Aguilar, who's one of our leads in Manos Returns was there too and we all just 
we felt like Charlie's Angels or Monos Angels or something. <laughs> it was so fun. That's great. And what was it like meeting Jonah? Oh, uh, he is so awesome. I don't know if you've ever seen the photograph of him and his wife for Halloween. He, several years ago, dressed as the master and his wife dressed as Torgo. And um, when we did the photo booth picture, he immediately put his arms out as though he was had the robe on. Um, <laughs> he was very happy to meet me. And, uh, and his wife was thrilled I, I gave her a copy of my book I brought for him so um, he now has a copy of my book and I got to meet uh, Joel Hodgson in person oh that he was your first time meeting him in person right. yeah he and I have talked a number of times back when about a year or so ago right before the MST thing happened I contacted him and and he agreed to write the forward to my book. And timing is amazing because it's like the Will Amano sets up the timing on everything. Because literally a month after I had initially talked to him, I was no longer able to find him directly. I mean, by then he you, he had um, levels, you know, an agent and, and things. And so it was really miraculous and he wouldn't have the time after that either. So it was incredible. Anyway, he was very happy to meet me too, and I gave him a copy of my book, and uh, we got a photo with that. Yeah, I saw <laughs> that photo, great. that was great. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about Manos Returns. I'm so excited that after, what, 51 years or something like that, uh, Manos is finally getting a sequel. I know that you've been heavily involved in in the process um do you have a role in the film are we going to see debbie returning yes definitely um just imagine that this child was raised by the valley lodge and the wives and the master and torgo and the fact that um you know she's just not that pleasant or that well balanced after 50 years so anyway Debbie's now in charge of the place Wow! and, and the master has ascended he's um, my dad has his role in it we found and brought back Diane Marie who played my mother in the original film yeah, wow, she's that's great. still beautiful yeah. 50 years later I mean she was I think 21 years old back in 1966 and uh, she was great. And we also have the son of the sheriff. Our sheriff was William Brian Jennings, and his son is Brian Jennings, and he looks a lot like his daddy. And he just loved the role. That's awesome. Well, I'm really excited. Um, I've watched both of the teasers, and I thought that I saw you in there in, in maybe the second <laughs> teaser, so that's great to hear. Um, yes, and it was written by uh, Tanya Tomic, who's an award-winning independent filmmaker in Seattle, and uh, Rachel Jackson, who created Mono's Hands of Felt, the puppet oh, theater. Yeah. So the three of us uh, wrote the film. Uh, Tanya is the director, and Rachel is assistant director. So there's four of us that have produced the film, but uh, us three women uh, wrote it. That's fantastic. Um, and I want to give you a little bit of praise from something that I heard you say in one of your vlogs um, when you were talking about Manos. You said, you know, we're not trying to purposely make a bad movie. We're trying to go out there and make the best movie we possibly can. And I was so glad to hear that because I think that too often, especially right now in, in the age of Sharknado, there's too many people out there trying to make tongue-in-cheek bad movies. So I was really glad to hear you say that. Well, thank you. You know, this is probably not going to win an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's super low budget. I did my research before we started and some of my favorite independent films. And, and they all had much larger budgets than we did. But the fact that it's Monos and that the MST fans... Are, are very, very supportive of us. We, um, with the small budget we had, everybody that was part of it gave 200% of their heart and soul to it. And we had so much talent and so much was given to us. And the will of Manos was worked throughout 
In fact, uh, one one remarkable thing that happened was I had the convertible car lined up, but I didn't have my dream car lined up. And then like three days before everybody showed up and we started filming, I was offered a classic 1965 blue Mustang convertible. Oh, wow. So it's like the most gorgeous car ever. I couldn't believe these people were willing to let us use their car and on gravel roads. It, I, I was terrified every moment <laughs> they had that car, terrified. Yeah. But um, it just brought... It just brought so much more to the film. It's remarkable. I cannot wait for people to see it. Yeah. You know, I think it helps so much when people are really passionate about something. It it just makes people want to work that much harder on it. And I think that's one of the things about Monos to begin with. It was so so poorly executed and then you know people can pick it apart it's taught in film school is everything not to do in filmmaking but i think it's clear to anybody who really uh watches it is the passion that was involved these people really they tried they had no idea what they were doing in terms of film but they really tried yeah and you know that's one of our that's what we try to do on the podcast a lot of times our slogan is the podcast where low budgets meet high praise. It's tough making oh, a movie, beautiful. you know? So just, just the fact that you can go out there and get it done, you know, that's an accomplishment. So let me let me chat with you real quick about your books. You have a book out right now, and you just announced that you have another one coming out. You want to talk about that? Yes, yes. Um, my book, Growing Up with Manos, The Hands of Fate, uh, was just published last March, so it's been out almost a year. I have five stars on Goodreads and on Amazon. Awesome. Well, actually, it might be four and a half on Goodreads. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's getting really good reviews, and it's a story about um, Monos and Hands of Fate from 1966 to now, and I, from my memories and a lot of people that I've interviewed, and uh, at the party, the after party, MST3K after party Tuesday night, I met um, someone who I can't say yet, but he wants to help me get an agent and a publisher for my next book, which I'm calling For the Love of Manos. Yeah, I love the title. Thank you. <laughs> and it's crazy. The idea came to me actually Tuesday night. And uh, I immediately put it out on on Facebook, and I've already got a, some stories. It's going to be a collection of love stories of all kinds of love, but the things, the love that Manos brings people together. So many people over the years have told me stories about how they renewed relationships or created relationships or, or set Manos as the barometer by which their relationship was going to work. And I'm starting the book with my own love story and how Manos, the resurgence of Manos brought my father and I back together after years of estrangement. So there's a big story there. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm really excited. This thing's practically writing itself. And, uh, and I'm really inspired and motivated. I don't think that I knew that about you and your father, that, that, you know, you kind of reconnected after a while. So it's a, it's a really great story. Yeah. I haven't talked about it too much. Now I want to, I see that it's important because I talk to a lot of people privately, you know, I've developed friendships because of social media and, um, you know, I've always wanted to be somebody who is, uh, inspiring and helpful and and that's who I've been in my life and this is just another platform and and it seems that I want to emulate the people that I admire the most and those are the people that dig deep and they pull out the things that are difficult to talk about but things that help other people that's fantastic um the last question that I want to ask you you know with all this going on it really seems like there has been this incredible resurgence with Manos in the last couple years, really. I mean, you know, obviously when Mystery Science Theater did the episode back in the 90s, that's what 
brought it back into the consciousness. But with the new movie and your book and all this stuff going on, it really seems like it's kind of uh, back back in the picture in a lot of ways. Has that inspired you to get more involved with uh, acting again and and doing different things like that? Do you see um, where you know where do you see your career going from here? Yes, I've been I've been following Manos and being involved with connecting with people since it came out and since um, you know the early two thousands when social media really started growing and um, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. But it hasn't been about um, making money. It's been a hobby. But at this point, it takes up so much of my time, and I am an artist and a creative person, I always walk, think outside the box. And so I see Manos, I see this thing as a platform for me with my books. It's it's opened the world to other things. Uh, I was involved in acting through high school and, uh, and decided to go the way of the artist after that. So I had a couple careers that I raised my children on through my art. But now is my opportunity to get back to my first love, which is I love being on stage and I love engaging with people and being public. So I'm looking for opportunities, more conventions. I did um, Crypticon last year. I've done a few film festivals. And I'm looking for opportunities to go to universities and colleges uh, for speaking presentations and screenings of the restoration of Manos. And um, I'm developing a number of contacts right now and um, looking for invitations. So, so I'm ready to go on the road. My kids are raised. You know, my life is pretty stable, and I'm just ready to, to take this wherever, wherever it can lead. It's just so much fun for me, but i got to make a living at the same time. Right. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear that. I, I wish you the best of luck with that. Um, and by the way, that Manos restoration, I own the Blu-ray. It's just gorgeous. Isn't it? I mean, and that's a funny thing to say about Manos, but it's true. The original film, well, the film that was screened at the Capri Theater for the premiere in 1966, and in my book, it, it describes the whole process of uh, creating the film, but that was actually a copy of a copy hmm. so it was never ever shown until now wow. in the way in the original colors in the way that it was so our um, director of photography Bob Goodry wasn't really that horrible it was just what he was uh, told to do and what happened afterwards with the film with the editing and all that was beyond his control. Right, yeah. Well, that's great that people are finally now seeing it the way that it was meant to be seen. Even better, actually, <laughs> but yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jackie, tell our B-movie maniacs out there where they can go if they want to connect more with you and learn more about Manos Returns. Uh, well, for me, everything I've channeled into or funneled into Debbie's Manos. So uh, Debbie's Manos on Blogspot, that's my blog. My website is Debbie's Manos. And on Facebook, you can find me on Debbie's Manos. And um, I'm also just my private page on Facebook, Jackie Ray Naaman Jones. Just, um, I'm always... I'm always chatting with people, and and I just love talking mono, so, <laughs> you know, find me. <laughs> That's great, and we'll put some links down below to all of this as well, so it's easier f for our listeners to uh, check it out. Yeah, and Monos Returns, we're on Facebook, too. Fantastic. Well, Jackie, thank you so much for chatting with me, and uh, I'm hoping down the line, hopefully our podcast, Be Movie Mania, will have an opportunity to review Monos Returns. Oh, I hope you do. Um, I can't say who it is, but at the party we were approached by a distributor that's very anxious to look at Manos Returns. So we're just over overwhelmed and thrilled because if we get this one, they would have been our top choice to begin with. So Great. That's awesome. So yeah, we're coming along. We're in post-production and it should just be a few months now. We're down to the details. Fantastic. Well, Jackie, thanks so much 
for chatting with me and continued success in the future. Thanks, Paul. Great talking to you. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo!